Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Nesta'inuhu ve nastaghfiruhu ve nu'minu bihi azza ve celle. Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah ve vahdehu la şerike la. Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmaîn amma ba'd ayyuhal muslimun with the law's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer all praise belongs to Allah the guardian evolver the cherisher keeper sustainer of all the systems of knowledge all the systems of science we seek his help we ask for his forgiveness we put our faith and our trust in him mighty and sublime is he I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one and only, there is no like unto him. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to whom the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago, is Allah's servant, messenger, prophet to all of mankind. We ask Allah's peace, his blessings, his highest exaltations, be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, the righteous all, on you, O Muslims, be peace. As-salamu alaykum. <clears throat> it is greetings to our brothers, the few brothers we have here, Masjid Muhammad and a couple of our sisters joining us today for our Friday prayer. And as usual, we are not, I repeat, not open for uh, Juma full time. Um, we are keeping up. I am, as many of you all do. And <clears throat> we are constantly being told, and I was startled to hear that the United States had 250,000 new cases of COVID with the variant Omicron just yesterday. One day, 250,000 new cases. So let us not become complacent and careless. Let's be careful. The experts are telling us we're a long way from being out of this and look like when we get past one COVID-19 and Delta, we got another variant. So we're, we're not comfortable just opening here in Jacksonville. And I know some of our communities have gone back. You've opened your centers and messages, but be very careful. Uh, but we are not comfortable yet with the variants still existing. And then we're in the winter month. We're in the winter month. And I must say uh, to you all out there across the country, uh, I know it's winter time. You should, you should think about relocating to Florida. And I'm, re I'm, I'm recommending Jacksonville. 70 plus degrees here, sunshine, not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful weather. So you don't have to be freezing now. You come out them cold climates. And, and come down south. So we invite you to come join us here in Jacksonville, Florida. So greetings to our members who are at home watching us live on Facebook, our Juma conference line. And we were a few minutes getting on live because we had to make some adjustments uh, technically to our uh, video feed and we were able to get up live. So we're on. So those of you all who are watching us on Facebook live, welcome. I want to welcome my dear brother and friend. Uh, he's like family. He is family. Uh, Imam Kareem Muhammad Abdullah and his community. Uh, he uh, sent me a text this morning. They were with us last week too. The Birmingham Islamic Center. So they're joining us for Jumar from Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, they joined us last week. They're joining us this week. And he told me they will be joining us inshallah next week. So welcome my dear friend Imam Kareem Muhammad Abdullah in your community there uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. You honor us by joining us for our Friday prayer. Greetings to our members, brothers and sisters around the United States of America, East Coast, West Coast, North, South, all over in the islands, family and friends in Bermuda, beautiful island of U.S. Virgin Islands, Omadosa there, Khalid Amin in Saudi Arabia, uh, Khalid, uh, uh, what's Khalid, uh, Khalid, uh, is it Muhammad? I'm thinking of in the North Mariana Islands, 
our friend over there in, in the North Mariana Islands, and so many of you around the world, especially Sister Junaina Abdullah, always from Malaysia, our sister there in Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, all over the globe. Welcome to our Friday prayer. To our Christian brothers and sisters, we say peace be with you. To our Jewish brothers and sisters, shalom, shalom. And special season's greetings. And we say happy holidays to our Christian family members, relatives, uh, co-workers, associates, friends, uh, neighbors that are celebrating this sacred month for them in this sacred week of Christmas. This is their sacred holidays. Now, dear Muslims, I, I, I shouldn't have to tell you, Muslims don't celebrate Christmas. This is not a holiday for us. This is the Christian's holiday. Jews don't celebrate Christmas. Uh, Jews have Hanukkah. Muslims have Eid. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al Adha. So there's no such thing as a Muslim Christmas. Don't exist, never have, no such thing. So we don't celebrate Christmas, we respect Christmas. We respect the holidays, the ceremonial days as Muhammad the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prayers and peace be upon the Prophet. He taught his companions and his followers. He said, listen, every nation, every people, every society have their ceremonial holidays, sacred days. So we respect them. So there's no Christian Eid uh, al fitr Christian Eid al Adha. no. No Jewish Eid, Jewish, no. And they respect us. They respect us here in the United States of America. So we are respecting them. Now, yes, we can spend time during these holidays with our family members, and you should. But just be careful. Uh, don't get too caught up in the spirit and you start acting like you you look celebrating Christmas also. Don't get too caught up in that. This is their sacred holiday and we give them greetings, season's greetings, happy holidays, but no such thing as a Muslim Christmas. That doesn't exist. <clears throat> uh, our subject today is we hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. We hear and we obey. And I read from the 24th chapter of the Quran titled An Nur, the light. Now, this is not the light like I'm looking at in the ceiling. No, it's not that kind of light. And it's not the light that the sun gives us every day. It's not that kind of light. The daylight, nope. This is a nur. And a nur, uh, if you change the vowel from u to a, you go from nur to nar. Nar. Nar is fire. That's fire, the lights in the city. I'm pointing at the lights in the city. That's nar. The light that's on the Quran that I use for reading. This is Nar. Fire, light, enlightenment, light. Nur is revelation. Nur is enlightenment. But not just enlightenment, not just any enlightenment now. Revealed scripture. That's Nur. Revelation. That God Himself, via using the agency of the angel, Gabriel. The Bible says, Jibril in the Quran. So the angels bring nur revelation from God to the prophet that God chose or choose for his particular revelation. So in this case, Muhammad the prophet was the recipient of Al Nur. And there's a chapter 24, I just gave it to you. And this is the 24th day of December, Christmas Eve. Begin reading, I'm beginning to read, reading from verse 51. We hear and we obey. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. 
with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. The subject. وَأُولَٰئِكَ حُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ God, the mighty spoke the truth. Translating now from Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation. 2009, 11th edition. Very important. The answer of the believers when they have been summoned إِذَا دُعُوا تَ اللَّهُ and his messenger. I recall listening to Imam W. D. Muhammad once. I believe it was a Ramadan session, Shaw. And I mentioned him because he would attend these sessions in uh, Chicago when Imam Muhammad was alive. And he said something to us. He said, you all have been summoned. You've been summoned. You know how they give you a summons to appear in court to show up? He said, God has summoned you. You've been called. The whole group, us Muslims. Summoned for what? Summoned to be Muslims and to establish Al-Islam in America. We've been called. Our Christian brothers and sisters now, some of them, they, when they go into Christianity, the preaching, the uh, teaching the religion, to be a pastor, a minister, they say what? They have been called. That's what they say. They've been called. So Imam Muhammad told us, he said, Allah has summoned you. If you he said, if you're here listening to my voice, and even if for those who are not physically present, but in the community around the United States of America, and I'm speaking specifically of America now, I know I'm talking to people in the world, and all the Muslims, the two billion or so around the globe, some of you all are born Muslims, so you are born from Muslim parents. You have generations of Al-Islam, not us in America. We don't even have 100 years yet. About nine years will be 100. So the great majority of us in America, we have been summoned. We've been called to embrace Al-Islam in America, and then our children and grandchildren, our offspring, will be born like your generations, and they're born now. But when we started in America, 1930, we were being summoned, called. So he told us, Imam Muhammad, God granted him the highest station in paradise. He said, God has summoned all of you. And, and he told me once personally, uh, we were in a car, driving. He just picked me up from the airport in Chicago. And we were just talking, casual conversation. And the conversation turned again to this. And he said, Yakya, you all are special people. All of you all who follow my leadership and accept it willingly. And what is his leadership? A call to Allah and his messenger. Don't forget that now. What Imam Muhammad's call was, inviting us to Al-Islam. Inviting us to the Quran, inviting us to follow Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That was his invitation to us, and the great majority of us responded to the summons. We were summoned, and we accept that. So we still here, we working. So we hear, we obey, we listen. The answer God says of the believers when summoned to Allah and His Messenger. If you recall last week. Now, if you're new today, you didn't hear the Juma last week, you can go back and get it. Good is the reward for those who do good. Just scroll down on this page, Mr. Muhammad, or Al-Islam Worldwide Ministry on Facebook, or YouTube, or Imam Yahya Abdullah, and you can get the Juma in the uh, Juma's before, previous Juma's on this page. So, you, you heard me talk about how it's important for us to not only say we believe in God, yes, and listen to Allah, yes. But also, Allah tells us to obey Muhammad the prophet. I'm reading this. The answer of the believers, when summoned to Allah 
and his messenger in order that he may judge God, judge between them, is no other than this. This is what we're supposed to say. We're invited, summoned by God, summoned to obey God and his prophet Muhammad. What is it that we say? Allah told Prophet Muhammad, say, tell him. The only thing for you all to say is, Yakulu Samirna wa Ta'na. We hear and we obey. What are our instructions? Now we hear, say they have heard a caller calling them to faith. Say, and we hear and we believe. Now once you listen, then what is it that you're supposed to obey? Obey the guidelines. Obey the regulations. Obey the rules. Obey the traditions of our religion. We are supposed to obey. Not be disobedient. And always remember this now. Islam, Al-Islam doesn't need any of us. God doesn't need any of us. No. And Allah addressed the people with that mentality in the past, in the time of the prophet, when they were embracing Al-Islam, their attitude was, some of them, oh yeah, we'll join y'all, we're going to be a part of y'all, y'all should be happy to have me. Allah said, oh Muhammad, tell them, say you're not doing God any favors, and you're not doing the religion any favors by becoming a Muslim. Say no, God has favored you. And that he selected you and brought you into the universal concepts, the universal truth that he intended for all people on this earth. So it's a favor. Allah says, count not your Islam as a favor to God and the prophet. Allah has favored you. So the imam said, every last one of us were blessed. And every last one of us was special because God chose us. He summoned us. Now, we didn't have to listen, but we're here because we did what? Submit now on top now. We heard it and we obeyed it. And we still listening and obeying. Say they say those who respond to the summons. We hear and we obey. Now, what's the benefit of that? God told Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon them. Say, now, here is what you're going to get. Here is your reward and benefit. For such as listen and obey, they will have success. They will attain felicity, success. But now the word felicity here is English. The Arabic term, muflihun. Muflihun. Qad aflahal. Ah, you hear it there? Chapter 23. Qad aflahal. Mu'minun. Guarantee. Again, this is Quran. Chapter 23. First verse, called the using the same word here, Muflihun, guarantee the believers will be successful. No doubt about it. In this life and in the next. And if you don't get your success in this life, you remain a believer, guaranteed in the next life. But now what kind of success is this? The type of success Felaha. You got to put a little effort in for this one. Felaha. I'm going to read another one too. This there. Felaha. Felahin is the farmer. Felaha means to work to cultivate something. So the more you work, the more you cultivate, the more success you have. That's this one. Felaha. All right. Verse 52. Wa man yuti Allah wa Rasulahu. وَيَخْشَ اللَّهَ وَيَتَّقْهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ Now here's another word for success. But it's different from مُفْلِهُونَ فَائِزُونَ It is such as obey Allah and His Messenger, both, both, 
obey God and his messenger. And yakshallah. This is not taqwa. Yaksha, khashya. Yakshallah. Taqwa, for you all who don't know, T-A-Q-W-A. Taqwa means to be regardful of God, conscious of God. Yakshallah means to respect God. Rebel God. Respect God. You know how you respect your parents? And you respect, you should be respecting your parents. Now, I know we live in a crazy society and environment where children no longer have respect for the elders and respect too many of them. They don't have respect for their parents. And they talk to their parents like they mean nothing to them. That's un Islamic. Muslims, you shouldn't be having that kind of attitude. Now, don't develop the attitude of this rebellious world. The rebellious spirit from Satan that you talk to your mother like she's crazy or you talk to your father, your grandparents like they crazy or like you out of your mind. No, you should respect them. And if you respect those parents and, and obey them, yaksha, that's kashya. You, you're not scared of your father, your mother. Well, let me, let me qualify that. God rest her soul because I sure was scared of my mother. I have to tell you that. And my cousin over there tell you why. He was too. He, he, he was a little angel when he came around our house. Everybody had to behave over Miss Bertha Brown's house. She was, she was something else. She, she, she literally put the fear of God in you. And if you didn't fear God, you feared the strap that she had behind that. It was fear. No, no joke. Seriously. She was a disciplinarian. And there were many old school mothers like that. Many old school mothers like that. Well, we had one of those. I had one. Thank God for her too. God rest her soul. And have mercy on her. And, and um, she was a righteous lady, a righteous woman. God forgive her her sins and grant her paradise. Now don't send me no, no little ugly face and tell me I can't pray for my mother. You out your mind. I'm going to keep praying for my mother. All of y'all pray for your parents. Pray for your mothers. And pray for it. Muhammad the prophet stood up for a dead body. That wasn't a Muslim, but a Jew at a funeral procession. The body was, he was teaching his followers and companions something. Respect the deceased one. Now, we don't make janazah. No, we don't. That's different. Janazah means a funeral prayer. No, 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 no. We only do that for believers, believing Muslims. We only do that for believing Muslims. If our parents are not believing Muslims, we don't do janazahs for them. Okay, so I'm going to make a distinction now. When I say pray, I'm talking about dua, dua, supplication. You can pray in your mind and your heart and send personal prayers for your fathers and your mothers and your relatives and the ancestors that were behind us all the way back to the shores of Africa. Yes, pray for them. But when it comes to Janazah, no, we don't make Janazah for them. No, no, we don't do that. So the prayer is one of dua. Yakshallah. So God says, obey. It is such as obey God and his messenger. And Yahshallah, reverence God. Be respectful of God. Don't disrespect God. Don't disrespect Muhammad the prophet. And do right. فَأُولَٰئِكَ حُمُّ الْفَائِزُونَ That will win. In the end, you win. You succeed. Now, I just read a, a verse before that said you'll succeed also. But those are two average, different words. One, muflihun. This one, felihat. Work at it. Put some effort out. That's the first one I read. Like the farmer. Prepare something. Hope for product. Faith in the Seeds that you plant, that they're going to grow and develop. Plant something. Fa is on. That's success that is a gift from God. God gift you with that. You show respect to God. You show respect to Muhammad the prophet and all the prophets. You respect righteousness. God gift you with success. Here's your gift. See, you ain't got to work for that. You just show some respect. Respect the power granted in you. Respect the a superior authority over you. And respect the one who taught you about that. Muhammad, the prophet. Okay? And now here, 
you're going to win. Fatty Zoom. And you're going to win in this life. And you're going to win in the next. And if you don't get the wins you want in this life, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You stay the course and you're guaranteed to get it on the next side. But let me share something with you. I've shared this with you before. And Imam W. Muhammad shared this with us. Sometimes, because we're so selfish, some of us, we want everything for us. Yeah, for us. But there's a verse in the Quran that, that if you're looking at it a little differently now, it, it is cautioning us by giving us this statement. It says, do not eat up the property of the orphans. Okay. That's saying the generational wealth and resources. This is no way. Look at this now. Have something for the next generation. Don't eat everything now. Plant some things that somebody else can eat off later. Invest so somebody else can benefit from that later. So don't eat all the orphans' wealth. That's in the Quran. No, no, you're just looking at it like, oh, that's off the No, no, it's saying invest something in the future. You don't need to eat everything in your lifetime. Plant something that your children will eat from, your grandchildren will eat from, the generations down the road will benefit from. You see? So sometimes you're working. And let me tell you something. I'm saving it for the second part of Jumar because I don't I don't want to get off goal, but I will just drop this part in. I I was so thrilled and greetings to my family in DeSoto and Dallas Islamic Association DeSoto, Texas. I was so thrilled last week when I was in Dallas of these young people that I invested time and energy and money and resources teaching for years their parents and the grandchildren and to see them blossom and to see the harvest growing in I was so I, I had to gather myself together I was like all praise due to Allah the time was worth it it was time well spent I'll share a little bit of that with you in the second part of the book, inshallah. it is such as obey God and his messenger and fear God and do right that will win. That is soon will be successful. Verse 53. That's important because that's Dhamma. Inna laha khabirun bima ta'amalun. They swear they're strong as oaths by Allah that if only thou would command them they would leave their homes. Tell us what to do, Muhammad. We swear we're going to do this and do that. Say, they swear they're strong as oaths by God. That if only they would get the command, you tell them to do something, they'll leave their homes. Allah said, Muhammad, tell them. Good, say, let Tukusimu. Don't make all these promises, all this swearing. That's not required. That's not necessary. Ta'atun ma'rufatun. Obedience. Hmm. Obedience is more appropriate, more proper. You don't need to make extreme promises of what you would do if you've been commanded to do this and do that. That's not required of you. And God said in the Quran, say, even if we ask you to give what you have, to just give everything you have, donate all you have, and say, you wouldn't do it. So God don't ask that. He don't require that to go to any extremes. As a matter of fact, we're told in our religion, say, don't hold your hands so tight like a miser that you choke yourself. 
You're stingy, greedy, hoarding everything. Hoarders, H-O-R-D-E-S, hoarding everything. Say, no, don't be like that. But caution, don't go to the other extreme. Don't extend your hand so far that you become poor. Mm, see? Don't, don't hoard everything. Don't be greedy and stingy and miser. But don't give away everything that you now are destitute and you are poor. That's not al Islam. I'll give everything I have. That's not required in our religion. God says what's required is obedience. Say, how about obeying? See, that's enough right there. Swear not. Obedience is more appropriate and reasonable. Verily, Allah, in the law, khabirun bima ta'amalun. Because God is well acquainted of your activities. He's acquainted of your works. He's acquainted of your deeds. He know what you're doing. He know what you intend to do. God is aware of it. So you don't need to make these outlandish statements and outlandish claims of what you're going to do. That's not necessary in our religion. Verse 54. قُلْ أَتَعْتِيُوا اللَّهَ وَأَتِيُوا الرَّسُولَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّمَا عَلَيْهِ مَا حُمِلَ وَعَلَيْكُمْ مَا حُمِلْتُمْ وَإِن تُتِيُوهُ تَعْتَدُوا وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَادُ الْمُبِينِ Say, hence the subject, we hear obey. Obey. You see, this is repeated now. It's about all through all these verses. Obey, obey, obey. Atana, obey, watil, obey. Say, obey Allah and obey the messenger. But, hmm, if you turn away, he, the messenger, the prophet, is only responsible. Listen to this very carefully. He is only responsible for the duty alayhi mahumila. Humila means weight, responsibility. He is only responsible for the weight and the duty that God put on him. He has weight. He has responsibilities and duties. He's responsible for what God has obligated him to do. And you all, wa alaykum, plural, ma humiltum. And all of the rest of you all, all over the world, Muslim nations, Muslim populations, now we are part of that two billion group all over the world. In America, the African American Muslims and others in the United States of America. But we are the indigenous Muslims in America. We're indigenous to this land. Not like the native, but we've been here seven, eight generations. So we're here. So we are indigenous Muslims in America. We didn't, we, we didn't migrate except during slavery, and we didn't migrate. We were forced to our ancestors. But we are homegrown USA Muslims. Asli America. Our origin is the, the Arabs. They understood exactly what I just said. Because they're, they're questioning me sometimes. Say, well, so okay, you're from America, but where's your origin? Where's your country? Your Belad. Belad. Where are you from? Country. Min Wayne. Min Belad. Belad. Where? And I have to tell them, Belad, America. <laughs> My country is America. Honestly, I'm Rika. My origin is the United States of America. So, yes, brothers out there, Around the Muslim world, our origin is the United States of America. So God says to us, 1400 years ago to the prophet and subsequently to us, you all are responsible. You're responsible for the duties that are placed on you. So everybody in our religion, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu alaykum bi anfusikum O you who believe your own souls obligate you your own self obligate you the prophet is not responsible for us 
Muhammad the prophet didn't die for our sins. No disrespect to our Christian brothers and sisters. Our Jewish brothers and sisters, they don't believe that. They like us as Muslims, we don't believe that. That Jesus died for our sins. No, he didn't. And I'm saying no, he didn't. Biblically, no, he didn't. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's in the New Testament. He, when they was having him up on the cross, he wanted to know why he was up there and why he wasn't getting no help. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, this is scripture. I'm not making this up. You all can research it yourself. I'm talking to you all out there in Facebook land that always like to send you little ugly comments that I delete, 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 delete. I don't respond to you anymore. The critics. Because it seems like you all are ignorant. I'm talking to the ignorant ones. There's a very small group out there that after every Jumar, they'll send me something in the messenger and it's some ugly comments and thank Allah, Facebook or Meta, that's the new name for Facebook, Meta, they have a tool where all I have to do is manage the, the comments and I go there and just delete them. Because if I start responding to them, it'll be a jihad, a literary jihad. And I have no interest in that. Because I'm, I'm reading it and I'm saying these people don't know the religion. They don't know Christianity. And uh, let me give you a little side note. I know Christianity because I grew up in it. My father was a Baptist minister. I went to church on Sundays until I became a Muslim at 18. That's all I knew was Christianity. So you, 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 you're not talking to somebody that's uninformed about the Bible. So you don't know that. So go back and read your Bible. And read in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was prostrate, making such death, head down on the ground like the Muslims prayed. And he was saying, God, if it be your will, that's in the New Testament, let this cup, this crucifixion thing they're getting ready to do to me, let this cup, this circumstances pass me. Now that tells you another thing. Jesus wasn't God. What God? If he's praying, how is he God? He don't need to pray if he's God. How they gonna capture God and crucify God? And if he was God, why did he say, why have you forsaken me on this cross? So you all out there saying, oh, he died for my sins, he will it not. He did not. He didn't want to go through that at all. Are some hard headed sinners. Disobedient, don't want to obey. Say, the prophet is responsible for the duty placed on him, and you all, us, are responsible for what's on you. If you obey him, the prophet, you shall be on right guidance. And I conclude the first part of this. The messenger's duty is only to make the message reach you plain and clear. Okay? So, brother imams, you all out there, some of you, a few of you, with this Dictator's mentality. Tyrant's mentality. You're out of place. You're out of the role of the office of your man. That's not our duty, our job. Our main job is what Allah told Muhammad the prophet was his main job. Make the message, reach the people plain and clear to the best of your ability. After that, you're not responsible for them. Nope. Can't come to your house and tell you what to do. Can't tell you what to do even in the message. No, we just tell you here we plan to do this, we plan to do this. Will you help? Will you cooperate with us? Will you volunteer? That's all we can do. Make the message plain and clear. Not force anybody to do anything. And Allah says in another portion, many parts of the Quran of the Prophet, let's do alaykum be wakil. God told him, tell them, I'm not set over you to manage your life. You're a grown person. You're responsible to manage your own life. 
Nobody should be managing your life. You're not children. You do that with children, young babies, because they need some a guardian. They need an adult. They need somebody to help them. But once you become a grown up, you're responsible for yourself. And as Muslims, but look at the beauty of that. Look at the dignity in that. Look at the honor in that. That you're responsible for yourself. You are in charge of you. God put the responsibility on you. He trusts you enough. He trusts us enough to say, no, 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 no. I trust you enough to put responsibility and weight on you to carry it yourself. You got this. Muhammad will teach you. Muhammad will educate you. The man will teach you. The man will educate you. But you have your own mind. And you take it. And you digest it. You may do better with it, more with it, than the teacher teaching you. This is true. Depending on how you're situated. So you bring it into your mind. You bring it into your experiences. You bring it into your life. And you utilize the Quran. The life of the prophet. And you make your life what you want your life to be. That God want all of us to have the best life in this life. And the best in the next. So assume your own responsibilities. Be responsible for yourselves. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. والصلاه والسلام على رسول الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد ايها المسلمون again dear believers friends neighbors peace be with you assalamu alaikum shalom shalom seasons greetings happy holidays to our dear christian and i have a lot of christian family members here in Jacksonville and Dallas, Texas and around the United States. And I love them dearly. As a matter of fact, uh, all of my sisters are Christians, but we never have debated. In Casa I'm gonna tell you, my cousin, my first cousin here today, we don't argue about religion. I can't ever remember when we've argued about religion. We don't. They respect me as a Muslim. I respect them as Christians. And here's the interesting thing. Nearly all of my sisters who are Christians, when their children were born, multiple children, they asked me to give them Muslim names. So, I, so I've named them. They, they got names. Aisha, Fatima, uh, Hassan, Shadid. They got Muslim names. They're children. And, 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 I, and I didn't ask them why they wanted me to do it. They said, no, nah, we want you to name them. I said, well, you know, you're, you're not Muslim. But we want them to have Muslim name. And who knows, maybe one day they will become Muslims, inshallah. Okay, second part now, switching the picture. We hear and we obey subject for, the, for, for our first part of Juma. Now, this still flows with it, but it gives us a different picture. And it's connected with obedience. Listen. So I read up to 54. Same chapter 24 and know the light. Now verse 55. For the second part of the book. Bar. Community. Progress. Look what Allah says. After giving us all over. Verse 51 to 50, 54. Obey. 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 Now listen to 55. Wa'adu Allahu ladhina aminu minkum. Wa'amilu salihati. ليستخلفنهم في الأرض كما استخلف الذين now, now my Arab speaking brothers you heard correctly Khalifa you heard that that's correct كما استخلف and that's in the plural ليستخلفنهم so there's no one Khalifa one ruler on the earth for all Muslims it's Muhammad the prophet is our leader we follow but no one Khalifa. This is plural. Okay? كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَا يُمَكِّنَّ مَكِّنَّ مَكِّنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي 
the deep dark I'm reading with what it's called it the so I'm not reading disjointed disjointed I'm reading with the flow connecting the letters and the language that's the science of connecting I'm explaining it to you all so you you know what I'm doing that's the proper way to read the Quran God Almighty spoke the truth. Now translate. Now listen to this. And remember what I was saying. It flows from verse 51 that started this section to verse 54. Obey, 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 obey. Now, here go the rewards. Why the law? Allah has promised to those among you who believe, faith first, while Salihah and work righteous deeds, do good work. It's not enough for us to say we believe, we believe, we believe. What are you doing? What are you doing to help the Muslim community? What are you doing to improve it? What are you doing to progress it? What are you doing for your life, your family? So you believe in God. Where the works to back it up? Got to have works to back it up. No, no, we just can't say you believe something and ain't, 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 ain't contributing nothing that don't work in Islam. It does work in Christianity. Allah has promised to those among you who believe and work righteous deeds that he will certainly, oh, this is beautiful, grant them he, going, he, God, is going to certainly grant the believers inheritance, establish them in the land. Hmm. God promised that, that he's going to establish us in America. And I can tell you, Allah is establishing us in America. Now, it's not just for Muslims. It's for any who believe in God. One of my friends sent me a question this morning before Juma. He was having a discussion with a non-Muslim Christian lady. And she said, well, uh, if Islam is this and that, why is it that Christians are being successful too? Jews are being successful too. I didn't even have to think hard on that one. I said, chapter 2, verse 62. You know what that verse is, 2 and 62? Whoever believes in the Quran and the Torah and the Christians and even include the former star worshippers, saviors, whoever have faith and any, and any. So if those false religions didn't cover everybody, God said to the prophet, I'm paraphrasing, and any, I gave you the chapter, you can go read it yourself, chapter 2, verse 62. Any who believe in God, will have their reward with their Lord. So Muslims, we don't have an exclusive right to inheritance, establishments. We look around us and we see, well, that's not reality anyway. We see Christians achieving, making progress. Many of them, more achievements and accomplishments than Muslims. Jews, achieving. Catholics achieving. But that's what God said and told Muhammad the prophet. You, you're going to be in a race. So compete. Run in a competitive race. For all what? El Khairat. El Khairat. Good. And Imam Muhammad translated this way. And also goods. G-O-O-D-S. Run for doing good and goods. So the Christians in the race. Jews in the race. Muslims, we in the race. Catholics in the race. The Baha'is in the race. Buddhists in the race. Sikhs in the race. Yes. Hindus are in the race. China is in the race big time. America is still boasting and bragging.
brag that we're still the number one uh, uh, world economy. But I kind of have my doubts. <laughs> and, and, I, and I believe the big, the big bad, uh, as they say, the 800 pounds are really in the room. Hey, yeah, let, the, let them go on and brag. China! Yeah, okay, y'all keep bragging. We keep building, y'all keep bragging. Y'all are one in 29, 30 trillion dollars worth of debt. America. How you, the, how you the number one economy and you in 30 trillion dollars worth of debt? You couldn't make that boast. You, you said, I'm the richest man in Jacksonville. But you owe every bank in town. I, I just said something and you all who are informed. <laughs> we had a pharaoh claiming all of that. Lord have mercy. We will have certainly establish you in the land. So this is what Allah has promised to the believing people. And those who obey him, obey the prophet, he will establish us in fil Arabi. In the dirt, in the earth, didn't say in the sky, said in the land. Land is here. Arda means land, meaning you're gonna get some land. You're gonna be in charge of land. That's what God is saying. As He granted it to those before you, study the history behind you. See how the Muslims were established in the time of Muhammad the prophet in Medina. How Islam spread all over the world. How land was under Muslim control and how the Muslim nations have land to this day. They are some of the richest nations on earth. So God said, just like I established those behind you, they didn't have what, they, what you looking at them. Abu Dhabi didn't have this wealth in the time of the prophet. They have now. Qatar didn't have trillions of dollars uh, in the time of the prophet that they have now. UAE didn't have the wealth. Saudi didn't have the wealth. Kuwait didn't have the wealth. Dubai didn't have the wealth. Indonesia didn't have the wealth. I can just keep going down the list of Muslim nations that were not established back in the time of the prophet, but look at them now. This verse is true. So if it's true for them and true for them in the past and the present, it will be true for us. Just take some time. And some of us we may not even see it all in our life. I doubt that we'll see it all in our lifetime. But you don't have to see it all in your lifetime. And you don't have to achieve it all in your lifetime. Just get your share when it's your time. And, and encourage the next group, generation. All right, you all got to have some land. God says he wants you to have land. God says he has made you caliphs of the land of the earth. Inherit some property. That's chapter 24, verse 55. After he told you to obey him and obey the prophet, he said, now get you some of this earth. Well, I remember somebody telling us that in the old days. Right. Sound like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to me. Right. God forgive him his sins and grant him paradise. Get you some of this earth. Now, I don't know. He might have got it from this chapter and this verse. But God said, you, you got, this is your inheritance. What are you talking about? You don't want this. This is your, this is your inheritance. As he granted, I'm, I'm almost done. As he granted it to those before them. And look what else. And that he. God. Will establish. In authority. Your religion. The one which he has. Chosen for them. Oh that is wonderful. Where the, where the evidence of this. Imam Yahya. We're in the United States of America. All over the country. I'm speaking to our international community. All over the country in America, all over the United States of America, there are masajids, that's plural for masjid. Masajids, you know them as mosques, non-Muslims, from one end of this country to the other and constantly growing and constantly developing. And nobody is stopping us in America. Because this is the land of freedom, of religion, and freedom to choose whatever religion and lifestyle we want. So God has established Islam in America. And let me give you a shining example. Someone posted it up on Facebook. I put it up on our page. 
Rashid, my dear friend from Detroit, you probably already heard the news. Hamtramck, Hamtramck, Michigan, I think I pronounced it right. The birthplace of Imam Devin D. Muhammad. That's where he was born, on Yemen Street. In the United States of America, Muslims around the world, they have a Muslim government in that city for the first time in America, the entire council, all the councilmen on the council are Muslims in the city right outside of Detroit in Hamtramck, Michigan. The city Imam Muhammad was born in is run by Muslims. In our lifetime, well, I, I just read that. When I was in Dallas a long time ago, many years ago in the 80s, would you be surprised if I told you that the first mayor of a city in America was in Coots, you never heard of it, Coots, Texas. And our brother, who was a Muslim member, I think his name was Bilal, uh, he was the first mayor of a city in the United States of America. And he's African American Muslim in our community. And the people who voted him in, now he was living in Coots, Texas. So, so I don't know what you know about Texas, but when you hear Coots, ain't too many of us live there. The majority of the people were European American. But because of his character and who he was, the majority of the people who were European Americans said, we want him to be our leader, and they voted him to be the mayor of Coots, Texas. African American. Muslim. And they know it was Muslim. So God says, I will make your religion an authority in the land. And I'm going to change your condition from fear, the fear in which you used to live, the spray, the walk out the house, tell people you Muslims and cover where you keep on. Say, no, no. I'm going to change that from the fear in which you used to live to one of security and peace. They will worship me alone and not associate anything with me. And if any do reject faith after this, they are rebellious. Verse 56, and I conclude. Wa akimu salata, wa atu zakata. Here we go. Wa atiru rasule. I hope you heard that. La alakum turhamun. So establish regular salat when you become the leaders in the land. And give regular charity. Don't be selfish. Now look. And obey the messenger. Allah doesn't even put himself in that verse. Though he's revealing it throughout all other verses. Obey Allah, obey Muhammad, obey Allah, obey the prophet, obey God, obey the prophet. But here when he concludes it, say, and obey the messenger that you may receive the mercy. So you all out there that keep saying all we need is God and not Muhammad, you should read this that I just shared with you today. And my, my great news is I conclude and we make a lot. I was so excited, satisfied, thrilled to see my grandson, my nephews, and congratulations to you all over there, DeSoto. For the first time in the city of Dallas, Texas, Dallas DISD, my grandson, Malik Muhammad, and Abdul Muhammad, my nephew, is actually on the team, South Oak Cliff. You can Google him just quickly. They won the state 5A championship in football for the entire city of Dallas. 2.7 million people in that city. I spent 32 years working and teaching them and grooming them, little children, when they were little babies. All of them know how to mix a lot of tarawee. And they had the last name Muhammad. And when the game was over at Cowboys Stadium, Jerry Jones World is where they played a high school game for the championship. First ever. The whole city was there. 45,769 people. And do you know who was the defense?
defensive MVP of the game, and they had to put him up on the jumbotron with his name for all these people to see in the buckle of the Bible belt. Abdul Muhammad. And tears was just coming from me. I was like, Lord oh, have mercy. And the people were cheering, Muhammad, Muhammad, non-Muslims. And throughout the game, all of them in the masjid in DeSoto. And throughout the game, uh, Malik Muhammad, my grandson. That tackle made by Malik Muhammad, Abdul Muhammad, Malik Muhammad. Oh, they're stars on the team. And all I could think about was when they were born, little babies. And I remember when they were born. And I remember teaching their parents. And I remember teaching them Salat and prayer and how to make Tarawi Salat. And now to see them in the Cowboy Stadium and their names in broad light on the Jumbotron when the Dallas Cowboys play Abdul Muhammad. And the European Americans are handling the trophy to one of my students and our children named Muhammad. And they walking around in Dallas now with their heads held high. And, and I was checking with the father, show. And I, I said, how them boys doing? He said, oh, all of them celebrities now. Everybody know them. They can't go nowhere. Muhammad, Muhammad, Muhammad. And if you don't know Dallas, you don't understand the power of that kind of dawah. You would have to know them. You would have to have lived, spent time with them, how difficult it was. Though, when I tell you died in the woods, see, and I don't mean no disrespect, Bible thumpers, extremists, that's Dallas, Texas. Most of the missionaries in the world that go around the world, missionaries, Christian missionaries, come from Dallas, Texas. Heaven is time. The whole city, mayor, chief, uh, sheriff, uh, superintendent, Omni Hotel, put the colors up for their school. Uh, the big ball light that they have in the city. They put the lights up for their school. And all the newspapers and the radio and the interviews and the TV. Mohammed, Mohammed, Mohammed. Allah says, I will change your state of fear to one of peace and security. Allahu Akbar. Rabbina atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi akhirati hasanatan. Our Lord, grant us the best that this world and this life has to offer us. And grant us the best that the next life and the next world has to offer us. And save us from the punishment of the fires of sins. And oh Allah, please remove this pandemic and these viruses and variants from this earth. And bless our children and our grandchildren and our generations to come. To obey you and obey Muhammad the Prophet. Amin. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an Muhammad ar Rasulullah. Hayya la salat, hayya la salat, hayya la salat, hayya la salat. Qad kama ti salat, qad kama ti salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Now we're not running late now. We started a little later because of our technical difficulties we were having. So we were on track. And uh apologize for getting a little excited. Uh, I can't I couldn't help it. It's the spirit. I just apologize. I can't when you when you see the fruits of your labor. And you see it like that in our children in the next generation. You, you can't help but be overjoyed. <clears throat> Those of you all who are with us on Facebook, your first time, you watching, you hearing us. And if it's your time for Salat, many of those of us on the East Coast, you can join with us for the uh, two rock our prayer. Those of you all behind us, you know what time it is for your prayers. To come later. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. 
إياك نبض وإياك نستعين إهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أمين ألم نصر لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقر ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع الأسر يسرع إن مع الأسر يسرع فإذا فرقت فانصب وإلى ربك ثرقب الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر, الله أكبر. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أهد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أهد الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربنا لا تسد قلوبنا بعد دليتنا بحبنا من بدوت رحمة إنك أنت الوحاء الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين تقبل الله May Allah accept that prayer Thank you all for joining us I want to share this uh, Most of the students because this is important on that team, 3.0 grade average and higher. My grandson, nephew, 3.8 GPA. So these are just not athletes. And he told me about 22 of them have D1 scholarships to go to college. Top colleges all over the United States of America. 
So you all, please keep them in your prayer. Make do out for them. And, and I told him, uh, when the father told me, he said they are celebrities. I said, tell them they represent Muhammad. Because that's their name. Now, they, they ain't under the rug obscure anymore. Everybody know them, so they have to be on their best behavior. They're not going to be angels and saints. We're not talking about that. But be good Muslims and be good examples because you carry the name Muhammad. That's what I told them. I said, all right. So thank you all for joining us. Brothers on the way out, you know what your responsibilities are and sisters here locally. Name on the pad. Put your contribution there. It's appreciated. Thank you all very much. Those of you all on Facebook, Thank you so much for supporting us here in Jacksonville. We appreciate it. All of you know who you are. You would like to support us. Go to www.alislam worldwide ministry. Tap on donate. You can donate online. You like to mail in your contribution. Mail it to Alislam worldwide ministry P.O. Box 3204 Jacksonville, Florida 322. Zero six. We appreciate you. Thank you. May Allah continue to bless all of you. Thank you for selecting us to join with us. Our Jumar Conference line, Muhammad, my dear friend, uh, your, your community there. Thank you all for being with us. Imam Kareem Muhammad Abdullah in Birmingham at the Birmingham Islamic Center. Those of you all who've joined us on Facebook, wear your mask, be careful, wash your hands, practice physical distance. We've got this Omicron variant out there, so we're a long way from having this virus over. So let's be very careful. Enjoy your family during the holidays and be safe. Join us next week uh, on the same page, Master Muhammad, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also find us on YouTube, our YouTube channel, Al-Islam Worldwide Ministry, or you can type my name in, uh, Imam Yahya Abdullah. And it'll take you to our YouTube channel. Be well, be safe, peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Season's greetings to our Christian neighbors and friends and family. Happy holidays to all of you.